All right. Hello, Falcons out there in Falcon. I'm so excited to see you. There's an earthquake in my office. I'm so excited to see you. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to our uh, virtual family uh, informational presentation on what's going on next. Um, I hope you guys are all doing well out there. First things first, I just want to let you know, I miss your kids. I miss your kids so much. Um, as educators, children refill our souls every single day. And working in this box of my office has certainly uh, made me quite sad this year. And it's a whole different kind of job experience. And so let me just tell you from the get-go, um, we are doing everything we can, not just at Oak Valley, but at every one of our schools uh, here in Powell Unified to get your kids back as soon as we possibly can. Uh, I'm going to run through a bunch of information tonight. You know me, long PowerPoints, lots of me talking, um, but I've got a bunch of information here for you. Just so you know, this presentation is, is being broadcast right now live on our YouTube channel. It will be stored there forever, so you can watch this over and over again on those nights when you're having insomnia. Um, you can listen to me drone on, or if you're uh, not able to catch us live in the moment, you'll always be able to reference that. In addition, the slide deck for this presentation will be on our website uh, in the morning. You can see right up there in this corner over here is a QR code for you to scan and to scan that on your little uh, phone here. Just zap it with your picture app. It'll bring up a, a, a web link. We've done this before in our presentations uh, here at Oak Valley and it'll bring up a Google Doc where you can submit a question and we will attempt to answer as many questions as we can this evening. I have a feeling that a lot of these questions are going to be answered just as we go through uh, our presentation tonight. However, we will, uh, in the next couple of days, um, my, my team and I will, will put together an FAQ from the questions that people submitted prior to this event and any questions that families have coming out of this event, and we will post that FAQ uh, on our website. But I'm also joined tonight with my two assistant principals, my fantastic administrative team, Mr. Wild. Dr. Chamberlain, I'd like to thank them both for being here. They're monitoring the questions and they're gonna feed me questions as, as things come up. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the, the basics for tonight. Let's go ahead and get ourselves started here. So the current task that we're facing right now, if you remember from our last school board meeting is that all of our secondary schools, our middle schools and high schools, we're working right now uh, to finalize our plans and our timelines and present those uh, to our school board for the November 12th board meeting. And here at Oak Valley, we're exploring a couple different options, uh, looking for some consensus around our campus with, with all of our different stakeholders here and coming up with our timeline that's gonna work for our kids. And, and again, like I said, our goal here is to get our school open to as many students who choose to come back um, and as soon as it's you know, feasible to do so. So again, our goal here, we're trying to launch that rocket. We're, we're, we're right here right now. We're bringing small groups back to campus. I'll go over that in a second with some more details. We're working with our teams right now to, uh, to come up with our model that's gonna help uh, bring our kids back uh, for our families that wanna return here so that ultimately we can bring our kids back to Oak Valley Middle School um, as, as quickly and as safely as, as we possibly can. Um, all right, let's talk about July. Honestly, July seems like three lifetimes ago. This has been the longest few months of all of our lives. Um, but back in July, we had an enrollment right around 1550. 56% of our families uh, chose for in-person learning and 42% and of our families uh, chose for virtual. And we had about one and a half percent were opting for our, our, um, our uh, New Directions uh, Poway Home Education Program. And so the challenge from the beginning of the school year as we thought about how to come back is, is potentially how do we open up our schools for almost 900 kids? So that's a lot of bodies, a lot of people on this campus. And I'm gonna answer one of your questions right now. Mr. Young, I've changed my mind. That's okay. I'm gonna resurvey everybody. I'm gonna ask you what you wanna do moving forward. So right now I can see there's 105 people in there. Half of you are gonna, probably gonna drop out because you're gonna say, all right, perfect. He's gonna ask us what we wanna do again. So that's one of the big questions we've had here is, are you gonna resurvey? So yes, we're gonna ask you guys in, a, in, a, in about a couple weeks here, uh, which, which, which direction you wanna go. You wanna stay in your current choice um, or do you want to move somewhere else, uh, which is totally fine as well. Um, so this is kind of where our current situation is. This is what we've been dealing with. As you know, we had to open all virtual. 
um, within our school district and our teachers have been working, 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 working to provide the best possible experience for your students. Um, I get this question a lot, well, why? Why did elementary schools open up and not high schools? And let me take this scan me off here so you guys can see all of my uh, very important writing here. But elementaries and, and secondary schools are very, very different. It's two completely apples and oranges different worlds. In an elementary school, you have what's called like one cohort of kids. You got one teacher. So my daughter's in third grade. She's got one teacher and she's with those kids that are in third grade. And so when they were rebuilding their schedules, you know, in, in coming into early October, they were able to take their kids and divide them into those students that chose virtual and those students that chose on campus. So if you had, uh, say, four third grade teachers at your elementary school, the 75% uh, of the kids that chose on campus, for example, would be with three teachers that are on campus. And the 25% that chose virtual would be with that one teacher that's virtual. And you're able to divide that. Now that in itself still took many, many weeks for those elementary schools to put together. And the numbers didn't always fall where they needed to be. Some kids had to go to different schools. Some teachers had to teach different grade levels. Some teachers are now teaching combo classes and second grade, third grade combo class. So the math didn't quite work out as perfectly as anybody would have wanted. It took them several weeks to make that happen. Then our elementary schools were able to open in the model that we have now. If you have elementary age kids, you know, an on-campus student is there for about two hours, a little over two hours, and then they have some, some at-home work that they do each, each day as well. At our middle and high schools, things are different. We don't have just a group of kids that sit with one teacher and, and, and stay with them all day, right? So in our secondary schools, we have, you know, each of our kids has one teacher first period and one cohort of kids within their class. Well, then as soon as the bell rings for the next period, all of those kids in that class diffuse out into various other teachers' classrooms where they're into a whole other cohort. And then that web just continues to spread out and spread out and spread out and spread out. And so that creates some really unique, complex scenarios uh, for our middle and our high schools when it comes to how are we able to bring our kids back safely, keep our class sizes small, keep our staff and our students uh, safe, uh, adhering to the protocols that we need to ad adhere to uh, within our county and, and our state. So it's been really, really tricky for us to figure this out. And our particular school of almost, you know, 1,500, you know, just under 1,600 kids it's a lot of different individual schedules, a lot of different individual periods, a lot of different individual pathways that students are taking on a daily basis. And so um, it's, it's been a very large uh, conundrum for us to figure out how to bring back you know, our students that need to come back. So like I said, we got about 1,550 kids. So I wanna let you guys know this, okay? None of the models that any school in America on planet Earth is doing right now is what we really wanna do. None of them are ideal. None of these models can really match the power of the traditional in-person educational experience that your families have had here at Oak Valley since we opened in 2005. Nothing we're gonna be able to do this year is gonna be able to recreate that. And, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, right? But it's completely out of all of our hands. Um, this year is about doing the best that we possibly can in the less than ideal circumstances. Okay, we've got to be flexible. We have to give a little bit. And, and, and this is just the nature of our time. Life will return to normal. We will get through this. We will celebrate again. We will have our eighth grade luau's. We'll wear our Falcon shirts on Fridays. We will have our Halloween costume contest in the quad where my ad team and I, admin team and I will dominate like we always do. We will get back to that. Um, but for now, um, we're also learning a ton as we go every day about the work we're currently doing, which in the end is gonna make us better, better educators in the future. You know, I think if you think about the future of education, there is going to be virtual learning ex expansion across our country, right? We've learned a ton. And our teachers from the first day of school to where they are now have grown immensely and their ability to provide this at-home experience for students. And I'm so, so, so proud of the work that our teachers are doing. They're working their tails off. They're working harder and longer hours than they ever have in their entire careers. Um, you know, this, this is a profession. We're, 
this is something that we take serious pride in, and, and I'm so proud of the work that our teachers have done. Okay? Let me tell you what we believe. I'm a father of two kids that go to school in this district. I live in this right down the street, 3.1 miles away. I can get to work in about six minutes if I hit all the green lights. Um, we believe, I believe, that in-person teaching and learning is the most effective model for school, hands down. As a father, I want my kids back in school. No doubt about it. However, as a principal, I have the job to ensure that our students and our staff are safe when attending school. So I, I, I live in this kind of, my, my feet in two different worlds, right? I, I can't just think with my dad hat and unlock the gates, bring everybody in. I gotta think with my principal hat too. So we've really been exploring um, uh, here at Oak Valley and at our other schools really kind of three models have risen to the top over these, you know, these past couple months we've been doing this. Uh, the first right here, it's actually number three on my list here, but the first is virtual for all. We've been doing that this whole time. This is what we've been doing. And let me tell you that the, the experience today is way better than it was in the very beginning. Our teachers are getting their groove. They're finding the things that are being successful to them. They're throwing away the things that aren't being successful. They're finding those programs that are working great for them, and they're throwing out the things that aren't working great for them. They're starting to streamline their process. Um, so that's obviously one of the, the, the avenues that we've been working on this whole time. We also have kind of two alternate, you know, experiences that have risen to the top here when we think about our, our, our models for the future. The first one here is, is what we talked about really in the summer when we met last time, which was this idea of reorganizing our entire campus and dividing ourselves into two separate schools, an on-campus Oak Valley and a virtual Oak Valley. And that is still a possibility, but it brings with it some, some really, some huge challenges to overcome. And the kind of second experience here, the second kind of model is some sort of hybrid, uh, what we're calling simultaneous teaching model, where uh, students are either gonna be sitting at their kitchen table or they're gonna be sitting at a, 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 a classroom table, but they're gonna be experiencing the same version of school. It's two different locations, uh, the same experience of school. So these are the three things that we've been kind of working on since we've been opening. So what have we been doing? What is it, what's happening at Oak Valley? Oak Valley Middle School is open to kids right now. We had kids on campus today. I saw them outside doing PE. And so at the beginning of October, we brought back one of our special education programs here. Um, we also have many of our special education uh, providers are here on campus and they are doing different tasks. They're doing testing, they're doing various things. A lot of that stuff is happening as well. We have other select electives uh, that have been coming onto campus, not necessarily regularly every day like our special education class, um, but our ASB kids have been here several times. Uh, we're working to bring our robotics team back. Uh, we're working to bring back several other different groups and organizations uh, as we expand uh, moving forward into the weeks and weeks. We wanna bring as many of these groups back as we possibly can. My team and I right now are also working on bringing back a group of students that are really needing that support. We've gotten our six week grade report out. We've, we've looked at all the data. We've looked at the Ds and the Fs. You know, we, we've talked to teachers about the students that are struggling. And we really would like to start to bring back some, some students that are needing some critical support. Those students are not going to be uh, in a particular teacher's classroom doing teaching with that teacher. They're going to be doing their Zoom virtual learning here at Oak Valley with Mr. Wild, Dr. Chamberlain, with our counselors, our student services, our Falcon guides, a whole bunch of people that are going to smother them with some love and a little bit of kicking them in the buns, right, to kind of get them to, to get going here. Um, that's what we're working on right now, and we're trying to start that uh, in a couple weeks. Our, our real, uh, the, the challenge to that is finding uh, consistent adults uh, to be able to be here to supervise these students. Um, so that's what we're working on right now. We also have teachers that are going to be piloting, as, once we get some technology stuff going on, and I'll talk about that in a minute here, piloting some of the simultaneous te simultaneous teaching. Um, and we have, I teachers are here working every day. I have dozens of teachers on any given day that are here uh, doing this, this, uh, this uh, virtual learning uh, here from Oak Valley. Many of your students have seen me because I like to jump into class all the time and say hi to kids and burst into Miss Connor's class or Miss Hewitt's class or, or Mr. Booter's class and, you know, and pop in and, and, and say hi to our kids. Um, so our teachers are here working. Uh, it's, nice, it's nice to see them. Our office staff is here as well. So really our goal here is to, is to 
for me personally, I want to honor what our original obligation was, our original plan, which was to come back after winter break. That's still our plan. I'll let you know right now. The plan is to come back after winter break. Um, we have some work that we need to do in order to be prepared to reopen. We have two, these two possible models have given us two potential open dates. And the quickest one uh, would be coming at, at, at a winter break. And uh, honestly, again, as, as a dad, I want it to be that Monday after winter break. Um, but as a principal, I worry about people traveling over those two weeks and, and seeing what's happened to Vista Unified and some of our other school districts and they open up and two days later, they're shutting down again. Um, I'd like to give us a little bit of space in between that uh, winter break before we actually bring kids back. Um, but I'll go into this in so, to some little more detail in, in a little bit here. Um, so this is what has been happening right now, okay? The month of October uh, and into November, this is what is happening right now. So let's talk about these, these, this, these two kind of big models that have risen to the top here. And the first one is, is recreating this new, this master schedule. And just so you know, especially if you're a sixth grade family and, and you're, you're new to what middle school is like, <clears throat> I, I come from high schools. I, I was a high school teacher and a high school administrator um, before um, becoming a, working here in middle schools. But middle schools and high schools are very much like colleges. And the way we create school, the way we hire teachers, the way teachers are given uh, teaching assignments or jobs is based upon what kids sign up to take. Unlike elementary where everybody in first grade takes first grade and everybody in fourth grade takes fourth grade, here at Oak Valley, everybody's taking all kinds of things. And yes, everybody takes eighth grade science or whatever, but you're in different periods and there's different electives, there's different choices. So one of the options we have here would be to redo the entire master schedule and create two different separate schools. Keep in mind though, to create the master schedule we do on any given year, we hand out those forms to you in the spring, they're called course request forms. We give them out to our fifth grade, you know, we go down to our feeder schools and we hand them out to our kids and kids fill them out and you know, they turn them in in March. And from March until the last day counselors work at the end of June, we're building that master schedule. We're working on it all summer and we're working on the master schedule up until about two days before school starts. That's how long it takes to put all the kids into their classes, balance those classes. We've got kids that are in specialized programs. We've got our, our, our students in specialized populations. We've got all kinds of factors that create the weeks and weeks and weeks and months and months of work that it takes to create a master schedule. So doing this takes time. And this has been kind of one of the big fears of, of many schools and, and, and our high schools and our middle schools is, is, is the time that it takes to do this would delay uh, really any sort of reopening. This was what the problem was in the, in the, in the summertime when, you know, why don't we just put everybody into two different schools? There just wasn't enough time and we need to focus on, 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 on getting ready to open uh, the school year. Um, so not that it's off the table, but this is possibly, if we were to do that, we still would not be able to have all of our kids on campus at any given moment. We still would need to divide our kids, our on-campus kids into two groups because we need to keep our class sizes down uh, per the guidelines that are given to us by the county. So what we would do if we were to rebuild the master schedule is we would have our on-campus kids into two groups, an A group and a B group. So on any given day, you'd have one of those groups on campus. The other half of those on-campus kids would be at home doing independent work without guidance or direction from their teacher because their teacher would be on campus teaching the on-campus kids. Our virtual VLA kids, they're doing VLA. They're doing their, they're doing their thing um, in two separate schools. So you can see here on Monday, it's an odd day, periods one, three, and seven. Group A is here in, in person doing one, three, and seven. The other half of our on-campus kids, group B, they're at home doing work that's been assigned to them from those teachers in periods one, three, and seven. Our virtual kids doing periods one, three, and seven with a different set of teachers. On an even day, the next day, Tuesday, that same group would be back, this time doing two, four, and eight. Group B, they'd be at home doing work by themselves and our virtual kids would be with their virtual teachers. And that pattern would just repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. And that is absolutely certainly something uh, that we've been looking into. We've been trying to calculate uh, you know, sections and kids and where would our holes be and where do I have too many virtual kids and where do I have this and where are my teachers gonna be? And if I only have one teacher that teaches this elective, how do I offer this? So we've been doing all this stuff and doing all this work. I got so many spreadsheets and Excel spreadsheet things. I, I can't handle it. It's all I do all day long. Um, there's definitely some strengths and some challenges to this model. Um, strengths, right? We keep our same bell schedule that we currently have. 
kids would be back on campus two days to three days a week, depending upon, you know, any given week could be three days one week and two days the next week, right? Because we have an odd number of days in the week. Um, our virtual learning kids would be completely separated. Our on-campus kids would be completely separated. They'd be doing their own thing. Honestly, this is the best model for personal choice due to health concerns. Kids on campus could be on campus. Families that want to remain at home can remain at home. This would allow for some, uh, some socialization amongst students while they're here. That also presents some gigantic challenges though. Um, and, and honestly, for me, this is a big one right here. Two to three days a week, those on-campus kids wouldn't be on campus. They'd be at home working independently, without a teacher to support them. Um, we're having students that are having difficulty doing that right now with a teacher barking at them via Zoom. <laughs> and well, you know, I don't know if, if many of our students would do well without any sort of direct guidance. So. In addition, we'd have to redo the complete master schedule, which would take many, many weeks to do. Um, uh, and we would only be able to implement this at a grading period. And, and, and there's no way this could happen between trimester one and trimester two. So we'd be looking at trimester two to trimester three, which happens in March. Now, of course, we could try to move that, that trimester up and kind of fudge these weeks a little bit, but that would still bleed us in deep, deep, into, uh, deep into the winter. Um, in addition, there's going to be an increased cost for human resources. We, we, we're not going to be able to fill all of our sections in the way that they are. Keep in mind that I've hired teachers this year. I've assigned teachers jobs this year based upon the things that kids have asked back in the spring. And now we're asking for a whole different set of, of apples and oranges as we're trying to, to, to fill kids into seats. And it's not going to line up evenly across the way. We're going to have too many here, too less here. I have nobody to teach uh, virtual art and all these kids sign up for art. So there's going to be messes and holes and things that need to be filled up all over the place. Um, students are probably not going to get their original elective. It's going, to, it's going to depend upon teachers that are on campus versus virtual. Some of our specialized programs would get all messed up, like Looping, uh, HGATE, um, AVID, some of our specialized programs where we have one teacher that does one thing. Um, if that teacher is on campus, what are all those virtual kids going to be doing or, or vice versa? If that teacher is teaching virtual, what are all those on-campus kids going to be doing or vice versa? So not to say it can't be done, but it certainly presents uh, some large challenges. So the next model we've been kind of looking at, and, and I know this is a lot to stare at. You're like, oh my gosh, Mr. Young, this is PowerPoint 101. Too much text and too many things on the screen, right? <laughs> I get it. I know. So. This is why this slide deck's all going to come out to you and you can kind of soak some of these things in. Um, but the idea here is, you know, we keep our current model that we have right now. We keep our current schedule right now. We keep our current master schedule, our current classes, our current group of kids. And we divide our on-campus kids into two chunks, chunk A and B. And we keep our virtual kids and we just teach them at different times. So in the morning, Half of our on-campus kids come to school. They do periods one, three, and seven. Then they go home. Then in the afternoon, our teachers teach the same lesson virtually to that other half of the on-campus kids and all the virtual kids. So teachers are teaching lessons twice a day, morning for a group of on-campus, afternoon for that second half of on-campus, and for all of our virtual kids. Um, then we just keep going, right? Then, then we would do the next day, even, then odd, and then even, and back and forth. We go back and forth like we normally do, okay? Um, so some things to think about, uh, you know, students who take the bus would be impacted. Teachers would be teaching twice in a day. Big one for me here is the periods. That we go, we, we cut our periods in half. So if I'm an on-campus kid in group A, and on Monday I come here for period one, period three, and period seven, and the afternoon, that doesn't mean I just get to go play basketball. I've been given work that I need to do by my teacher on my own at home. Same thing for our afternoon group. I'm not sleeping in and watching cartoons and having Count Chocula in the morning, even though it's Halloween. Um, no, I've been given work for my teacher to do in the morning by myself, and then I have instruction for my teacher in the afternoon. Okay, so this is definitely something different. Um, strengths. Kids on campus, this is what we want, right? We want kids back on campus. Some of the big challenges here for us is busing. We have the, the you know, we have 10 buses that come to Oak Valley. We're the second most buses in all of Power Unified. Um, and so having us have only a half day would be a big challenge for many of our families. Uh, our ESS program has also recently closed. So there is no daycare here currently at Oak Valley. So we would not have a way to 
house these students, um, uh, you know, if we had a large number of kids that needed supervision. Uh, periods are going to be short, so they're shortened by half, less instructional time. A lot of our students would struggle with some independent work uh, due to these short periods. Um, you know, our connections class and, and office hours gets all messed up in this bell schedule. It's hard to fit those classes in. Um, and we also have some human resources challenges as well, and you need to hire some, some open positions for that. So this definitely presents itself as a challenge as well. There's no easy option, right? If there's an easy option, every school in America would be doing it right now. Um, but there's no easy option, okay? So the third thing we've been exploring, and, and I know that the superintendent or the Powell Unified sent out a message to all families, you know, you know, from the superintendent. It was about the board meeting and, and kind of outlining kind of the next steps. And it, it talked about how we're having this forum this week. And, and in there, uh, she sent this video out of what's called simultaneous teaching. And it's something that's been piloted at, at our, at, at Del Norte, right across the street here. Um, and the idea of simultaneous teaching is is by adding a little some technology to our classrooms uh is it possible to do what we're doing right now but in two places at the same time so zoom which we're using in schools right now right has the ability to uh you know zoom on one computer with one camera but also have a second camera so is it possible for a teacher to be in the classroom teaching like i'm doing right now zoom at home to my vla kids but having my on-campus kids kind of right over here. We call it the live in the studio audience model. Okay, so while, you know, uh, Jimmy Fallon is doing his Tonight Show at home with the live studio audience, he's also talking to the people that are at, at home, you know, in the TV, okay? So the way I like to think of it here is one lesson, but in two environments, okay? And there's a video, and we've all got a lot to do, so I'm not going to play the video for you. The superintendent sent it out to you. It's within the slide deck. You'll be able to see it. Um, it's on the Powell Unified website, but it basically kind of models, you know, what, what that looks like. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, this presents some serious challenges as well. Um, you know, this, this, isn't, this isn't just something that is easy for us to flick, flick a switch, uh, and, and we would do this either. Um, but here's, you know, what a possible schedule could look like. Again, keep in mind, we've got to keep our on-campus kids in two groups. We can't have them all here on campus at the same time. We've got to keep them in two groups. So our on-campus kids, we divide into two groups, group A and group B, and our virtual kids would still be our virtual. Teachers stay the same, classes stay the same, schedule stays the same, all that stuff stays the same. You got your third period teachers, your same third period teacher. But if I'm a teacher, Mr. Young, and I'm teaching my social studies class, that means that I'm coming into Oak Valley, and on Monday, the on-campus group A are gonna be in my classroom, my on-campus group B are gonna be at home on their Chromebooks and my virtual kids are gonna be on their Chromebooks. One lesson, two environments. So you're sitting at the kitchen table or you're sitting at the table in my classroom, okay? So you can see in this particular model here, we have kids will come to school two days a week. So group A you can see is on campus uh, two days a week and uh, group B would be on campus here Thursday and Friday. On Wednesday here, we would do uh, to keep things even we do like a like a one through six day, an all virtual day, where there would be uh, some sort of touch point for teachers, perhaps a large block of office hours. Uh, teachers could be doing small groups, bringing in those kids that need extra support, doing some of that math eye ready work that we really want our kids to do. Um, there'd be there would also be a, at least a, a 40 minutes of work posted per class to get those required 240 instructional minutes in a, in a school day. So there would be work that kids would be doing. There would be work that teachers would be doing. You know, it's not just a day uh, to play Fortnite. Um, it is definitely a school day, but it would be a, 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 a virtual day. And it would also give us time to, you know, clean our school, you know, in, in, in the middle of the week and stuff. So, so this would be what the simultaneous, you know, schedule, you know, could look like. So like I said, there's some strengths and there's some challenges to this as well. Um, some of the strengths, we keep our schedule. Kids keep their teachers. Um, I think that that's a big thing for our families huge for our teachers and even huger for our kids is being able to keep your teachers. Uh, one of my big concerns with rebuilding the master schedule here is, is you'd be looking at uh, all new teachers um, for mo most of your teachers would change if you were a student. And I think that would be a struggle for many of us. Uh, students would be on campus two days a week. They'd be uh, zooming in uh, the, the other two days of the week and perhaps this virtual day in the middle. Um, students would be able to move back and forth. And, and this is this is big. 
So we're going to talk about health and safety in a second here. But if I'm sick and I'm an on-campus kid and I need to go home and I'm having a quarantine or I have the flu or I have a cold, or I have allergies, whatever it is, I'm able to keep doing school. I zoom right back in with whomever my teacher is. If I've rebuilt the master schedule and I have only on-campus kids in an on-campus school and a student is absent, there is no virtual option for them. There is no virtual school that they can pop into. They are going to be absent in the way students are traditionally absent, like we would have been last year. Kids absent, emails his teacher, what do I miss? That kind of thing. The difference though now with the world that we live in is that if you are showing any signs or symptoms of COVID, you're out of school for many, many days. This is no longer I, I'm at home for a day because I have a cold. Um, you know, I have this entire decision tree that I have to look at. And, you know, if a student has any sort of symptoms of a fever, a cough, shortness of breath, nasal congestion, sore throat, nausea, fatigue, headache, muscle or body aches, poor appetite, any of these symptoms, I mean, you're at home for a minimum of 72 hours. With a negative COVID test, it's a minimum of 72 hours. Without a COVID test, you're looking at four, 10 to 14 days. So the thought of having kids having to, to be able to come and go from school and still not miss school is a huge positive for me. And I think our teachers and our families would agree with that. Um, uh, let's see. So teachers have been doing this, this, uh, this, this virtual teaching. Uh, so they're not having to completely shift the way that they're doing. Um, they're going to have uh, some more time to prepare for the simultaneous teaching with this, with this day in the middle. Gives them some more time to prepare and plan, work with their teams, work with their colleagues. And this last model here is kind of what I was touching on, this increased flexibility for safety issues. Kids can kind of come in and out within this model. This does present some challenges as well. Again, if there weren't challenges, you know, uh, we would just, uh, every school in America would be open right now, but there are some definite challenges. And the big one here is, is this, this human cost. And you can, you can see that the human resources issue is a challenge in every single one of our, uh, one of our models. And, um, that's primarily, you know, I'll, I'll talk more about this in a second. That's primarily because not everybody can be here. We certainly have staff on our campus that for medical reasons are going to need to remain virtual for the rest of the year. Okay. But there's other people that are going to be gone too. On any given day at Oak Valley, in, on October 28th, 2019, I could have easily had five or six teachers absent because they're sick, because they have jury duty, because their kid is sick, because they have a doctor's appointment. Um, and that goes the same for office staff or Dr. Chamberlain or Mr. Wild or even me. Like right? People miss work because they get sick. And so we would need substitute teachers in any of these models, you know, to, to cover for these people, to cover the supervision of our children. And that honestly right now is the biggest limiting factor for all of secondary schools is this substitute teacher piece. Um, and it isn't necessarily, you know, the funding. I mean, funding is obviously an issue and it's going to cost money, but really it, it's, it's the people. There just, there aren't people out there, uh, you know, to take these jobs. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second here, but one of the other challenges to this is, is, is in many ways, this is an in-person learning, learning model for kids, but it's still online. School is still going to be what it is right now. It's still going to be virtual school, but here at Oak Valley. But I really want to hit all of you hard on understanding that school is not going to be what it was like last February. It's not going to be like that. It's not going to be like that at any of our schools. It's not like that at our elementary schools right now, and it's not going to be like that at our high schools. Um, it is going to take us a long time to get back to the way things were. Um, and that's just, it's unfortunate. I hate it. I hate it for my own kids as a dad. I hate it for all of your kids as a principal. Our teachers hate it. Um, you know, and another one of these uh, challenges here is where there's definitely going to be some equipment needs that we need. Um, and simultaneous teaching is not easy. It is going to be extremely difficult for our teachers. That is a big switch to be able to do this. Pay attention to your children at home, at the kitchen table, and also pay attention to the kids that are here on campus, right? And I got to pay attention to both equally. I can't focus on one or the other. I got to be there for both groups. Um, and that's going to be a challenge. 
So Mr. Wild and I have, have set up, you know, a classroom to kind of look, tell you what this kind of simultaneous teaching will kind of look like, or what any of these models are going to look like. What is a classroom going to be like? And yes, we've got these, you know, plastic barrier things that, you know, that we put up and. Uh, and Mr. Young, can you, Mr. Young, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you put the QR yeah. code back up so we can uh, continue to entertain questions? Oh yeah, that's great. That's uh, thank you. Cause it covers up a whole bunch of my text. So I've been taking that down. So anyway, again, families, if you're just joining us, uh, we have this QR code, which you can scan with your phone. That'll bring up a Google Doc where you can submit a question. If you have a question, Dr. Chamberlain and Mr. Wild are going to be, you know, compiling these questions, feeding them to me uh, here. Uh, when we get towards the end, we'll also be compiling them in an FAQ uh, to push out to families and post on our website as well. So thank you, Mr. Wild, for bringing that up. Appreciate that. That's why we're a team here at Oak Valley. Um, but yeah, so we put together what a classroom would look like. You can see, um, doesn't matter which model we use, okay? Classrooms are not going to look like they did before. Uh, kids are going to be sitting in a grid. We're going to be keeping as far away from each other as we possibly can. We cannot accommodate 850 kids on our campus at any one time, which is why we're going to have to be split up into two different groups. Um, we have these plexiglass barriers. Yes, they are there, um, but it's it's not a force field. It's not a magic bubble. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. You can see here, you know, that we would have, you know, a, a teacher up here simultaneous teaching. We'd have a, a workstation for teachers to be broadcasting. This is what the video shows you to be broadcasting on their whiteboard. So the kids virtually can see them here and see them on the whiteboard. And the kids would be sitting here watching. Our kids would not be Zooming necessarily on their Chromebooks on campus. They could be watching it live, but they would have Canvas open and would be doing all their work digital. We are not going to be passing out papers and cutting with construction paper and cutting open frogs with with um, with knives, right? That, that we're not going back to the way school was was you know, back last year. It's going to take us some time for all of schools in America to get back to that model. So this whole Canvas, digital, Google Doc, the stuff isn't going to be going away. So really what we're looking at here is just changing that location from your kitchen table uh, here to Oak Valley. Um, and, and, and honestly, that is going to be a great model for many of our kids. Many of our kids just need to be in the presence of another child and of a teacher. It doesn't matter that they're still sitting on a Chromebook. They're going to be doing just fine. Um, so those are kind of the, the things that, that you know that we've been looking at. They all present some some strengths and definitely some challenges to overcome. So again, just to kind of summarize what our three models here, right? We have the rebuilding the master schedule, where we divide Oak Valley into two different schools. Um, some of the huge problems with this is the time factor, right? We're looking at bleeding into late February, perhaps even into March, to be able to turn this on. We'd have to wait for a grading period. Kids would be getting new teachers. Uh, teachers would be getting new kids. Teachers would be teaching potentially new subjects or new grade levels. Kids' electives would be all changed. Um, some of our uh, specialized programs might not be able to run in the way that they run right now. Um, kids would be on school two to three days a week, depending upon any given week. Um, that would be kind of our first model. Our second model here keeps our current teachers, keeps our current, te our current courses, keeps our current schedule. Um, our, our class schedule, but the bell schedule would be all messed up, right? We would have a group of kids here in the morning on campus, then that second half of the on-campus kids and all of our virtuals would be getting that same lesson in the afternoon virtually. So uh, one lesson taught two different times, one in the morning, one in the afternoon. Kids would be doing independent work on the off time of that, right? And then our third model here is the simultaneous model, uh, which is being adopted by many of the high schools and middle schools uh, are, are, are kind of moving forward in this direction um, is this idea of the simultaneous teaching. We will keep our current teachers, we will keep our current bell schedule, for, I mean, this, this class schedule. Uh, we would probably be adjusting our individual periods and the times and things that would be adjusting as we would continue to investigate that. Um, we may have one day a week where students are doing some sort of independent work or, or, or some sort of virtual day. Um, kids would be on school two days a week. The other days they'd be doing school uh, zooming from home where they're doing it right now. Um, this would require some extra equipment, definitely require some training. Uh, we would be looking at phasing this in and reopening, like I said, coming out of winter break is what we'd be looking at would be our timeline uh, for reopening. So, all right, well, what the heck happens next? Thanks for all that information. Uh, what happens next, Mr. Young? So I have a uh, administrative team right here that works in the office with me. And we talk about this literally all the time. And we text about it on the weekends. And I think about it at three in the morning when I'm pacing in my backyard and I, I can't sleep because all I think about is, is your children and, and this wonderful place that I love so much called Oak Valley. Um, 
I have a, a team leader group that's made up of, of team leads in all of our different departments, and we talk about this a ton all the time. I also have a reopening committee, which is a group of teachers that have volunteered to raise their hand and and uh, talk about this stuff and look at some of the intricate details, which we'll get into the weeds after we we kind of finalize our plan here. Then we'll get into the weeds of well, what's the bell schedule going to be like, where the bus is going to be, how are we going to check kids in, where's the temperature, we're getting, you know, finalize all those things. Um, and then, of course, we have the larger staff, which we talked to. But we're going to work with all these different groups and, and finalize our plan to submit to the board. Um, we are going to, like I said, that's that's in November uh, and just here in two weeks when we, we have to give that to the board. Uh, we're going to also then, once the board approves what our plan is going to be, we're going to confirm with you what you want to do. You want to come back or you want to keep going at home. And uh, um, I know that's important for families. It's also important for me. It's important for us to have the proper data. Um, I, I need to know how many families are going to be coming back because that's going to tell me how many kids are going to be in a class. That's going to tell me how I need to set up these various classes. Um, it's allowing us to, to kind of balance our student data here. Um, once the you know if the board well once the board accepts our plan, I'm sure the board is going to approve everybody's plans. Um, but once that happens, then we'll be spending the next few weeks to finalize all of our preparations, um, focusing as much as we can on preparing our teachers. Our teachers, 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 teachers need help to prepare uh, for whatever is going to be happening next. So that will be um, kind of our next steps. So there are some parameters that regardless of where we go, we kind of have to continue to work within these parameters. The number one is transportation. The buses are going to come when the buses always come. We might be able to adjust them a little bit, um, you know, but right now our buses would have dropped off, you know, in, in the morning, anytime between 7.50 and 8.10, and the buses leave every day at 3.07 on a regular day. And so even though school gets out at 2.15 now, uh, we would need to kind of work with transportation to see if we'd be able to move that the, the, the transportation up so that we don't have students that are waiting for the bus after school for 45 minutes. So transportation is going to dictate um, some of our some of our work here. We need to work closely with them. Um, again, I, personally, I have a, a desire as a, as a, as a parent um, of kids. I want my kids to be with their same teacher. So I think we, we all have a practical desire to try to keep our master schedule as best we can um, to keep our, our kids and our teachers together. And, and, and again, I don't want to support one group at the detriment of the other group. I want to make sure that both our on-campus and our virtual learning kids are getting the best possible experience that they can for the whole rest of this year. It's critical that both groups are finding success here. Um, you know, when, when we come back to school, six feet distancing is still going to be required, you know, as best as we possibly can, right? I got a, a, a zoo here of rabid squirrels when these guys come back. They're going to be so excited to see each other. Um, and we're going to do our best to tell them to stay away, but I got two stories. I got stairs. I got... I mean, kids are gonna kids are gonna be kids, right? But we're gonna try our, our best to make sure that they're they're staying away. Um, you know, we have these plastic dividers, but we still need to make sure that our classes are as small as possible. Staffing is the big one, right? STEM staff are not gonna be able to return um, because of medical concerns or or, or other issues, and, and that's fine. And and that's that's all across. You know, all of our all of our schools are, are are dealing with this issue, and we're working with our district on staffing solutions. And what is that going to be? Um, there is a there is a, a big cost to this. A substitute teacher, you know, costs almost six hundred over six hundred dollars a week. You know, you multiply that, um, and that adds up, you know, really really quickly. Uh oh. And uh, sorry, here in the last bullet was um, students back on campus. Um, keep in mind, kids back on campus is going to look very different than where we were last fall. There's going to be less collaboration, continued focus on digital work a continuation of this virtual learning. And that's the same at every school. This isn't just Oak Valley. This is every one of our middle and high schools are going to be facing this exact same scenario, what school is going to be look like moving forward. Um, so what do we need to open? Why can't we open tomorrow? And again, as a dad, I do. As a principal, I need to be responsible. Uh, there's still cleaning equipment and products that we're waiting to receive and that we're distributing and that we're, we're getting ready and getting prepared for. So we're still working on that. Like I said, supervision is huge. We're going to need anywhere from 12 to 15 staff members per day to help supervise students in classrooms. If I have a teacher that needs to remain virtual this year, when those kids come back on campus, they're going to go to that teacher's classroom. And if he needs to remain virtual, I need to put an adult in that room to watch those kids. And I have several teachers, and, and actually we're, we're pretty low compared to other schools. Lots of our schools in our district have dozens and dozens of teachers uh, that need to remain virtual for whatever reason. Um, and I need to put an adult in that classroom to watch those kids. 
And like I said, so that's, that there's a humongous cost associated with that times 11 secondary schools. Um, you know, it's $635 or something a week for a substitute teacher times that by 12 to 15 people. I mean, you're looking at, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars to open up Oak Valley for the rest of the year. Um, and, I, and I really want to let you know, this is not a teacher union issue. This is not a, a, a funding issue. I mean, I, I know that nobody's got any money, but the people want to spend money to open schools. I really want to hit you hard on the big limiting factor for me right now that, that's hurting us is there's just not the people out there. I've been trying for weeks to try to get a long-term sub for a teacher who's about to have a baby and we're having difficulty even covering that one position. So there's just not a lot of subs you know, that, that, are, that are out there. People are afraid to come back to schools or people have other jobs or every school district, every school in the county is looking for subs and there's just not a lot of people out there. So we're working with the district on some creative ways to think about some other types of adults that we could be utilizing in these places. Um, I'm confident we'll be able to make it happen, not just at Oak Valley, but at all of 11 hour school. I'm confident uh, that our, our district leaders and, and, and the people here that are running the show are gonna do what we can uh, to make this happen. So, but that is, that is an obstacle that, that we face right now. Um, if you have a teaching credential and a pass the CBEST, get on the sub list, we're looking for you. <laughs> Uh, just a little pitch for you. Um, big thing here, if we are going to go with this, this simultaneous model, professional development for teachers is critical, right? And, and, and Friday, I have IT coming here to Oak Valley that's going to walk the site with my admin team. And we're going to look at the tech needs that we have at Oak Valley. We're going to look at what we have. Um, if you watch that video at Del Norte of what the model is over there that they've experimented with, they did, they did need to get a couple tech pieces. And we're going to walk our school and see what it is that we're missing. What do we have? What is it that we're missing? And are we going to be able to acquire that in a timely manner? So that's going to happen on Friday. Then I have a group of six teachers that have raised their hand on Tuesday to go over that tech and, and demo this model. Give it a try. No kids yet. Just try the tech. They're going to, they're going to do their teaching, uh, but they're going to try the two camera setup here. And um, then we're going to experiment and bring a couple kids in, and we're going to try this here at Oak Valley, and we're going to share that out with our staff um, and, and see what it's like for us. So our teachers are going to need some professional development. They're going to need some training in order to figure out how to do this. Um, again, kids coming on campus, we're going to need Chromebooks so they can get into that Canvas, get into that 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 uh, the, the modules that, that our teachers are creating, get into that work. And we're still not completely one to one yet. We're still waiting for shipments of Chromebooks to arrive to ensure that we're one to one all over the place. I got to figure out how to charge these Chromebooks because when I get when I gave all the sixth graders Chromebooks, we gave you all the charging cords too, and so we got to come up with a way to be able to charge Chromebooks. Um, PE and performing arts are still are still kind of a, a conundrum here. Uh, there have been, as of today, uh, some new guidelines on PE or on uh, sorry, excuse me, performing arts that talked about excuse me that are in the FAQs of our guidebook that we have to follow, but they haven't been updated in the guidebook. Basically, it says that you kind of sort of can do band and performing arts if you're socially distant and um, you're wearing masks, which as a former trumpet player, it makes it pretty hard uh, for me to play the trumpet while wearing a mask. Um, but also, as, as a guy who used to be the drum major and you know conduct the band as we march down the street here, makes it difficult to conduct the band when I'm used to you guys sitting all right here, but instead you guys are all the way out here in the field. So um, I, I know that the, the state is working on that. PE is, is kind of an interesting thing as well. Yes, kids are going to have to wear masks during PE. Our PE classes are large. Um, how are we going to be able to socially distance, uh, you know, and still do PE? What about in the gym? What about when it rains? There's still lots of intricacies, you know, that, that need to kind of be hammered out here. And again, Oak Valley, we're, we're, we're currently without an ESS program or any other sort of daycare service here. So if a model we adopted has some sort of partial day, you know, we wouldn't be able to supervise uh, students on campus. So we definitely have some obstacles that we're working to overcome. So here's this timeline, right? Early October, we opened up some specialized programs. You know, middle October, we're expanding that. Early November here, we're looking to bring back some of our uh, students that are struggling academically, bringing in some of these experimental cohorts that teachers are doing into, into November um, as they're piloting potentially the simultaneous model to see what that looks like, to demo that to the rest of our site. And if that's the direction we go, we'd be looking at, a, at, a, at an early January opening. Um, and if, it, if the, the master schedule is, is, the way, is the way to go here, um, you know, we would be looking at uh, trimester schools, which isn't just Oak Valley. There's many trimester schools in the district. Would be looking at that tri two to tri three opening, which, which is which is a bit far into the future for me. Um, 
All right, so now just kind of to change gears a little bit. Keep in mind, when we do come back to campus, health and safety is critical. All the stuff I talked about in July is all the same stuff. And I threw all those slides in this slide deck for you to go over, and they're all the same things that we've had, right? Um, we're going to have a staggered schedule. Um, we're going to, to have smaller numbers on campus. We're going to try to shoot for a, no more than 18 in a classroom. And 18 is even too big for me. Um, you know, but, but we're really trying to keep it lower than that. Um, students are still going to move from class to class in hallways, right? We're going to have passing periods and we're going to try to keep everybody like minnows swimming in, in, a, in a stream here, moving in the same direction. Uh, we're going to try to keep kids, you know, separated at lunch and things like that. But keep in mind, we are a pretty small campus. You know, we don't have a huge footprint here. We're, we're kind of a tight knit, you know, two story campus here. So kids will be interacting with each other. Um, students and staff, of course, will be temperature checked when we walk in here. Everybody's got to be masked always, must be socially distant. Um, we're only taking our masks off when we're eating or drinking, and we must, you know, uh, be socially distanced when doing so. So we're sitting in a group having lunch like we normally are. Uh, we're going to be sitting in a group like this. <laughs> um, and, you know, no one will be, everyone will need to be outside doing that. Um, so we're going to kind of try to, of course, we'd be limiting our movement around campus. Uh, outside of those passing periods. So if I needed a kid to come to my office, I'm not calling a kid to my office. I'm going out to the classroom to talk to the kid. Um, our classrooms and our common areas are going to be clean at the end of the day. It's not possible to do that deep cleaning in between periods. Again, this is one of the differences between elementary and middle uh, and high school where elementary have one cohort. They all go home. You can clean the whole place. And then the second cohort comes in. Well, we can't do that because as soon as the bell rings for the next period, all of our kids web into completely different classrooms and completely different directions. Okay, um, so that's there for you as well as a link to the PUSD uh, school reopening guidebook. Uh, that is there uh, for you guys to take a look at. It's on the Powell Unified website. It's in my newsletter every week. Um, and all, so there's a whole bunch more slides in here that were from that same presentation, that last presentation we did. Um, but Mr. Young, I have so many questions that you didn't answer. I know, I know. And I, you know, and I, I don't have an answer for every scenario right now. And you know, there's just so many what ifs and so many different factors that go into, into running, you know, these small cities that are our uh, comprehensive middle schools here and comprehensive high schools. But, um, you know, the bottom line is, is, is there's going to be some inherent level of risk by bringing your kids back. There is some inherent level of risk into going to Target or whatever it is, and you need to make sure that you're comfortable with that. You know, if, if you want to have your student back on campus. And if you're not, that's why we're providing a virtual experience for all kids in Powell Unified for the remainder of the school year. Um, you know, and, and that's that's just kind of the nature of where we are right now. So I've gotten some frequently asked questions that I've got here. Anything popped up, team, that's popped up from your, from the QR code before I skim through some of these? Anything like, like rise into the top there from what you guys are hearing? Yeah, we've gotten, we've gotten a lot of great questions, and I, I wish we could uh, address them all. Uh, the most recent one is what happens when it rains, right? Well, <laughs> let me, let's, 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 let's tell um, our parents what it's normally like, like when it rains, because as a, you know, I would, I would think that when it rains, it's no big deal. Uh, you just carry out your life like normal. But actually, in middle school, when it rains, it's like all of these kids are mogwise that you remember from the movie Gremlins, you can't feed them water after midnight. That's what happens. They go crazy when it rains. So I have no idea what it would be like when it rains during COVID, but we'd be keeping kids in classrooms and we'd be, we'd be doing stuff like that. <laughs> um, <laughs> jokes aside, there, there's been conversation about uh, parents when they are surveyed, will they know the model that we are going to go with? And will they, can, can you give an understanding of uh, the survey that we administered to our teachers and kind of their preference. So kind of just yeah, more direction on that model. And maybe where so we're yeah, going. I want families to be completely informed on the path we're going before you select what it is that you want to do. And that's why we, you know, we need uh, like another week and a half here to meet with our teams kind of one last time before we move to the board. So once the board has kind of seen that plan and gives us the thumbs up, um, you know, then we're going to, that will be, you know, that's when we will be asking families what the preference is going to be. I'll be continuing to update this, my newsletter every week, any new information, wherever it is, um, I will make sure that we're fully uh, transparent in the direction that we're going to be going um, with as much information as we possibly can. What we might not know by the time I survey you 
um, is some of the intricate details of the actual bell schedule. Is lunch break going to be 45 minutes long or 40 minutes long? I might not be able to tell you that intricate detail, but you will get the broad picture of we are doing this model and school is going to begin and end at these times. And you know, uh, that's the, 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 big, the big pieces will definitely be uh, sent out to families um, before you are asked to choose which path you want to take. So some of the other questions that have kind of come up here that were sent out to me is, um, you know, if we split ourselves into two groups, are siblings going to stay together? Absolutely. We're looking most likely at alphabetically splitting. Um, and, you know, there may be some room for us to make some adjustments, um, but definitely we're going to want to keep families together. Um, what's learning going to look like for my on-campus student during a simultaneous model? That's great. You no, know, it doesn't matter which direction or model we go. Virtual learning is here to stay. Chromebook, Canvas, Zoom, that's going to be the model for our secondary schools. Uh, this is just the result that we're facing this year. And, you know, even if we come back on a, on a re master schedule redo, um, there's still going to be this social distancing. There's still going to be these plexiglass barriers. There's still going to be the need for the teachers. There's still going to be the need to do all these same safety protocols. So, so much of school is going to continue to be done in the same manner. Um, so Mr. Young, along those lines then, if I am a teacher at Oak Valley and I choose because I have, you know, whatever need, a health condition, I'm pregnant, whatever the case may be, and I'm going to be virtual. And you're a student in my class who, and you select in-person learning. So you go to room, I don't know, 415, and you're sitting in there. I'm teaching from my home or my office to you. You're gonna be in that classroom. Who's gonna be in there with you? Can you kind of speak to that and pair that down a little bit? That's a great question. So you're gonna be in that classroom with your Chromebook because you're gonna to need to bring your Chromebook to school every day. You're going to be zooming in with that teacher. Uh, you're going to get a pair of free earbuds that I got for every student at Oak Valley. And you're going to be basically doing exactly what your kid's doing at home right now at the kitchen table or whatever it is that they're doing. Inside that room is going to be some sort of adult that's supervising you. Uh, it could be a substitute teacher, is, is, you know, but, but it could also be Mr. Wow. <laughs> it could be you, big guy. Um, it's going to be, you know, an adult and perhaps we're going to, depending upon the, the cost, right, it's a huge cost or, or the number of adults we're able to get, we may be looking to put several groups together. So maybe we're going to be utilizing uh, the multi-purpose room or maybe the covered lunch area to get kids outside. We, we may be needing to think in some creative ways. It's not necessarily going to just, you know, go to room 506 because the teacher in room 506 uh, is not in 506 because that teacher has you know, is, is pregnant or something at home or has a health concern or something like that. So um, we're, we're going to attempt to get as creative as we can. But as you know, Oak Valley is a big school. We're full. I don't have any empty classrooms on this campus. And actually, our multi-purpose room is our orchestra classroom. So I don't exactly have a ton of large spaces to do this, um, you know, which is why we, we, we need more uh, adults than perhaps some of our other campuses or, or other schools in the county that might have other large spaces they could utilize. But essentially for that particular period where you have a teacher that's vir home virtual, uh, you'll be here at school uh, zooming in uh, with your thing, doing your thing uh, like you normally would be doing at home. Uh, and then perhaps when you go to your next period class, it might be a teacher that's an on-campus teacher. That's a great question. Uh, yeah, Dr. Chamberlain, you got one? Yeah, I have one here. So all the models you mentioned, is there a model where virtual students are learning exactly the way they are now and not simultaneously learning with on-campus students? Um, you know, honestly, the only way that would happen is if schools don't reopen. And I don't know that schools not reopening is, is a possibility. I think we need to get our schools open. We need kids back. And unless there's some sort of, you know, mandate by someone way more powerful than me, like the governor that shuts down all schools. Um, that's probably not not a possibility. And that's why, uh, you know, I'm, I'm hesitant to, you know, I, I value the learning experience of our, of our families that have opted for virtual. I, I value the relationships that they built with the teachers and I value the time that teachers have taken to, to create those relationships. Um, and unfortunately, there just isn't a good way to resolve this um, for everyone. At the same time, we have kids at home that need to be here. They're suffering. I was an only child. Um, I got no siblings. I think about what I what would I have been doing right now. My mom was worked downtown. Uh, she was a publisher. She drove down, commuted downtown. I would have been at home alone. And I don't know that I would have had the intrinsic motivation to do school. 
be honest with you, I would have been playing a lot of Nintendo, <laughs> a lot of Super Mario Brothers 3. And, um, you know, I would have benefited um, not necessarily needing the direct instruction of, of school from last year. Like, I understand that school needs to be on a Chromebook, but I would have definitely benefited from having to have the schedule of getting up, taking a shower, going to school when the bell rings, sitting in a desk, um, having that teacher looking at me and giving the one raised eyebrow when I'm not paying attention. And I, I would have benefited from that. You know, and that is that is really the purpose of opening up our schools is to is to create that experience for those kids you know that really need that. And many of our students are doing fine doing virtual, and that's why you know I don't really want to upset that apple cart of all those teachers and all the work that they've done uh, creating these robust Canvas sites and all the trainings and things they've done on technology. Um, many of our kids are doing great, and they're going to continue to do great. Um, that's that's kind of where we are. Mr. Young, one more, um, and maybe just more of a call to action, but as you've mentioned, the, the staffing challenges, right, that, that we've had, there are some questions about, hey, you know, can, can parents volunteer? And we live in such a, a helpful community. I mean, 4S is a community that comes together. Um, can you maybe speak to parent volunteers, yes or no? And if the answer is no, maybe another call to action for Maybe they have, you know, some time to, to get on our sub list. Maybe one of their college graduated children is looking for some extra work, things like right. that. That's great. And, and, you know, honestly, I don't, I don't know about parent volunteers. I think that that is something we're definitely going to need to utilize parent volunteers, you know, moving forward it is we are all, you know, in this storm together. We're in different boats, right? But we're all in the storm together. And I definitely think that parent volunteers are, are, are we're going to need, I mean, to think about the army of people I'm going to need to check in with thermometers. You know, all of our kids, that's a great place where I could definitely use some parent volunteers every morning. Um, and perhaps, you know, we'll, we'll get to that in, in, in classrooms and things like that. But there are lots of different jobs that Powell Unified is looking to hire right now. We are short hundreds of instructional assistants. We're always looking for avid tutors, um, which are typically college age students. We're always looking for substitutes. So many of our classified employees have job openings right now, custodial and secretarial and all these other different job classifications. Um, Power Unified is hiring. And so if you're looking for work, there's definitely opportunities out there. Um, and we're, you know, and I'm not afraid to ask this community for help. And every time, long before I got here, but any time the Oak Valley or D39 or Del Sur or, or, or Del Norte or whatever school you are in 92127, anytime we've asked for help, this community has stepped up. And, and I, that's one of the reasons why I love being in this community. Um, and so I'll, definitely I will, I will ask, you know, when, when the time comes. Um, so this question here is virtual learning still an option, right? Virtual learning is going to be an option all year long. Um, if, a student, if a student goes back in person, uh, do they go to different classrooms each period? If so, what can the school do to make sure classrooms and desks are cleaned after each period? We're not going to be able to completely sanitize everything, right? It's just the nature of being a giant school with 67 different classrooms and huge athletic facilities. And so, yes, yeah, students are going to move from periods to periods. I only got three custodians. Um, they're not going to be able to sanitize in between those periods. Nor can we ensure six foot distancing at all times for the campus of our size. We got wipes. I got sanitizer in every classroom. Um, it's critical, though, for this conversation to start at home. Have a conversation with your kids about washing your hands and using hand sanitizer and don't snatch your nose and then touch the door handle and keep your mask on, right? It takes a village. We all need to be doing this together, not just at Oak Valley, but we're, we're at Ponce's. We need to be responsible as well um, and all these other places here uh, in, in our community, okay? Um, so we're going to, it's critical for us, you know, to partner with our, with our, all of our stakeholders to help uh, ensure the importance of being mindful of keeping a distance around those and using hand sanitizer, et cetera. Um, since kids are on campus, does that mean Oak Valley's reopened? Therefore, if we move back to this purple tier, does that preclude us uh, you know, from, from continuing down this path? We're open. It doesn't matter if we go to purple or not. We can continue down that path of reopening. Um, okay, so you don't need to worry about that. I know we're, we're at 6.04. I'm, I'm going to get you for two more minutes, and then I'll get you all you guys out of here, okay? Um, why are students not staying in cohorts in one classroom and teachers rotating from room to room? I talked about that, you know, a bunch. The middle school just doesn't work that right, right? We're much more complex than elementary school. You don't just take third grade with one teacher. You know, you got six different classes uh, with many different teachers. 
you know, and, and by the time you get into eighth grade, it, you know, it's, it's many times it's it's five different teachers that you go to. Uh, it's just not possible with a school of 1,600 kids, you know, 100 and something different adults that work on campus here um, and our varying class offerings. It's just unfortunately not possible. When am I going to reopen Oak Valley? As soon as I possibly can, folks. Like I said, as a dad, I want to do it today. As a principal, I got to be responsible, right? So depending upon the model we adopt, we're looking at either a mid-January opening here um, or, uh, you know, later into the winter if we're going to redo the master schedule. This is dependent upon the, of course, all this is dependent upon staffing. I'm going to need the easily easily 12 to 15 people uh, to, to be able to help us with this staffing piece uh, to fill these substitute positions here. Um, the situation is still very fluid. COVID infection rates um, are, are, are kind of, they're going up and down and then up and, and nationwide, they're really going up. Um, so I don't know what's going to happen in the next few weeks. Um, so we're still in a very, very fluid situation. And many of these factors you know, that, that are critical for us to reopening, uh, they all have to be in place in order for this to happen. And you know, some of it's out of, out of my hands here. Um, but I will continue to provide weekly updates about reopening in our newsletter. I selected on campus back in July. Am I going to have the opportunity to change? Yes. Okay, if you select it on campus or virtual or vice versa, you will have the opportunity to change after that board meeting and after we finalize our plan, we will ask families to reconfirm their selection. So um, again, scan that QR code if you've got a question and, and I'll, I'll post a, I'll post an, an FAQ after, um, after this presentation and we'll get that going for you. So I just wanna thank you guys for coming tonight, spending a, a few moments with me and uh, I want to thank my team for being here. Uh oh, I lost you. I want to thank my team for being here um, and supporting me this evening. I really appreciate that. Uh, we do have a PTSA meeting tonight at seven o'clock. Uh, it's a general, a general PTSA meeting. I hope to see many of you guys there. Um, but again, I can't emphasize enough how this job is difficult for all of us here at Oak Valley. Um, our teachers are really, really working hard. Counselors are working hard. Office staff is working hard. Custodians are working hard, grounds crews working hard, our instructional aides are working hard. You know, everybody is really working to do the best that we possibly can for your kids in what are the, ex the most difficult extreme circumstances that none of us could have ever ex expected to happen. None of us have been trained or went to school or even know what the heck we're doing. We're all you know, trying to figure this out here. Um, but I really, really thank the patience and the grace of this community, the way we've all stepped up to help each other. Um, you know, I know we're all, I got to be honest with you, at least three times a week, the Wi-Fi in my house drops out. And uh, my family has struggled this year. My kids and my wife, as she's a teacher in the district as well, have struggled with uh, remaining in class many times. And I know that's been a struggle for many of our families. And just thank you so much. Thank you so much for, for all your the work that you're doing at home, uh, helping us out, and all the love and support that you're giving us, all the kind things that you've been saying, and all the wonderful messages you've sent to our teachers. I, I really, really appreciate that. So. Um, I'll keep sending out information and our updates. Reach out if there's anything that you need from me. Uh, keep rocking 92127. I'll see you out there on at uh, Ponce's or that sushi place next door. Man, my wife and I, it's like every other weekend, those two places. I'll see you out there at Target. Um, I'll be around in the community, always wearing my Falcon gear. Uh, have a fantastic evening, everybody. And I look forward to doing one of these. Oh, one last thing. I'll do another one of these things. Like when we get ready to reopen, I'll do another one of these things that talks about safety and important coming back to campus details. So uh, have no fear. Uh, we'll, we'll keep doing these fun time live YouTube. So thank you so much, Oak Valley, for being here. I really appreciate it. I love you all. I love your kids. And uh, have yourself a fantastic evening. Take care.